Peugeot. I'm Zach. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> Chapter 29 of Genesis. Ra Jacob meets Rachel. So Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. And he looked and sighed well in the field. And behold, there were three flocks of... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> three flocks uh, three flocks of sheep laying by it for out of that well they watered the flocks a large stone was on the mouth's well now all the flocks would be gathered there and they would roll the stone from the well's mouth water the sheep and put the stone back in its place on the well's mouth now Jacob said to them my brethren where are you from and they said And they, and they said, We are from Har Haran. Then he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Ner? And they said, We know him. So he said to them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And look, his daughter Rachel is coming with the sheep. Then he said, Look, it is still high day. It is not time for the cattle to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go and feed them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered together, and they have rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. Now while he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. Shepherdess. Shepherd. <laughs> Sorry, I think. A shepherdess. I think that's how it said. Anyway. <laughs> and it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lift up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative and that he was Rebekah's son. So she ran and told her father. Then it came to pass when Laban heard the report that Jacob, Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to the house. So he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and of my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. Jacob's mar Jacob marries Leah and Rachel. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what should your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful from from beautiful form of appearance. I don't know if talking today for some reason. Now, now Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served him seven years for Rachel, and they, they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. Now Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob. And he went in to her, and Laban gave his, his maid, Zepha, to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel I served you? Why then have you deceived me? Runs in the family. <laughs> uh, I just love this wonderful family. How deceitful and stuff they like to be to each other. <laughs> And Laban said, It must be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her, 
fulfill her week, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me in still another seven years. Then Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as his wife also. And Laban gave his maid Bala, Bala, I don't know, Bala, to his daughter Rachel as a maid. Then Jacob also went in to Rachel and also loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Laban still another seven years. The children of Jacob. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived, bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For he said, the Lord, for she said, the Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again, and bore a son, and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved. He has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will become attracted to me, because I bore him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing so anyway, that's, yeah, now we're going to, talking about the children of Jacob. Uh, Laban tricked Jacob into marrying Leah, then have marrying Rachel, which she loved Rachel more than Leah. Um, that's a bit, you see, let's go back. You see a lot of these shows? Yeah, husband wives. Um but you notice that for a guy to have so many wives like this, it's hard for him to, you know, love each and every one of them, to spend more time with them. Because, for one thing, a guy is only one person. And if he marries a whole bunch of wives, it's to me, I'm thinking it's just, it's ridiculous to marry a whole bunch of wives. Just have one wife. That's it. Because if you have a whole bunch of wives, the, the guy is being pulled 40 different, well, I don't matter how wise he has, being pulled different ways. And that's very difficult because he's only one person. Um, but yeah, you can tell Laban was very sneaky. Uh, of course, it runs in the family. I mean, Rachel was helping Jacob get the deceive you know Isaac his father so you can definitely see that Rachel and Laban are siblings because they act the, they act the same way they're very deceitful um oh you gotta love family sometimes you gotta love siblings <laughs> yeah but I'm not saying all siblings are that bad I mean there's some pretty good ones um, I mean, yeah, Jacob, strife between Jacob and Esau. Uh, I'm trying to think if there, if there was any siblings in the Bible that did not. Well, the closest that came was, say, were like, like brothers. That did like siblings were supposed to towards each other. Would have been David and Jonathan. Yes, true. They weren't, you know, they weren't. They had different parents, but they treat each other like they were, you know, brothers. Because they loved each other like brothers. That's how siblings are supposed to act with each other. They're supposed to love each other. Yes, mind you, they can be pain in the butts. But you learn how to deal with that. And you learn how to get around all that, you know, pain in the butt stuff. And just, you know, love them unconditionally. Because that's what you're supposed to do. That's what God wants us to do. Because um, I love both my brothers, Chris and David. Yes, David, you're probably going to see this. So it's not talking about you. I also love both my sister-in-laws, uh, Kayla and Amanda. I also love my nephew, Zane. I also love both my nieces, my oldest and youngest niece, Megan and April. I also love my parents, 
Dan and Judy Bartel. <laughs> I can go on saying all these all these wonderful people that I love, but it it's for me it's unconditional love because it's through God that I have this unconditional love for people. Uh, yes, I am can I have been in the past. The past is behind me. Because I don't think about the past, I move forward and make sure I don't do the same mistakes I did in the past, uh, which is being a lot more calmer person, because that's basically what Goddess wants us to be, is be calm and relax. Um, he wants us to conditionally love everyone, even the ones that, even our politicians, yes, a lot of people say, well, why do we have to love our politicians? Look at all the stuff they did. He still wants us to love them. Because that's what God God is, is love. He unconditionally loves each and every one of us. Even when we goof up a lot, he still loves us. And his love will never go away, ever, for us. But anyway, that was Genesis chapter 29, and we'll go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, just bless this channel. Bless my channel. Oh. Let me get my words here, Father. You know, right now I'm, I'm having problems talking. But anyway, dear Heavenly Father, please bless this channel. Help people come and listen to your word, your message on this channel, Father. I will accept Jesus into their heart, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.